Ain't none of y'all niggas with me. Disclaimer. These are my opinions. They might not be popular and that's okay. You don't have to agree with them. In fact, you're entitled to that. I respect that. I welcome you to share your opinion in the comments below. Just keep it respectful. If you're okay with that, sit back and buckle up. We're headed to Mars. From day one at the hospital, they target our children. Say they gonna immunize them, they somehow get autism. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense for me because I'm a Sagittarius and both of those signs are actually the worst compatibility for myself in business and friendships, everything all around. Sorry for those people. Why was this monkey unchecked? You crazy, but this one caused so much emotion. You blue monkey! If you're neurotypical and you understand, let me know in the comments because maybe I just don't get it. And if you have the same feelings as myself, let me know that as well. Hey, yo, move them fucking Reeboks out my way before I step on your toes. Welcome to Mars, my artistic random shit. Ain't none of y'all niggas with me. I'm by my fucking self because ain't none of y'all niggas stand up for me. And if I stop, it's shut, 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 shut up. up. Be quiet before you get. XL. A lot of you would be shook if you learned that your fave was autistic on the spectrum or neurodiverse. Everybody out here yelling no stylist needs a stylist. That's not a flex. Why are straight women taking dating advice from gay men? And no, I'm not saying that gay men don't know anything about being men. What I'm saying is, how does a man who's attracted to men know what a man who's attracted to women finds attractive in women? Would it be through osmosis or from learning from being raised by women? Just let me know. I'm I, I'm seriously curious. I don't get it. I don't know. It's just something about these relationship experts who don't have a man trying to tell somebody else about how to have him, how to get a man, or how to behave to keep a man when it's clear that they don't like women. Why is the only representation of black gay men everything but masculine? And when there's a potentially masculine black gay man, he goes and paints his nails and start rocking skirts and blouses and we're back to square one. No, I have no problem with femininity. The problem I have is that the only representation we have as black gay men are effeminate black gay men with the whiny gay voice that are the best friends of the girls that like to go shopping. All of the things that you already know, so I'm not going to drag this out. I'm just tired of seeing that. That's all. And just like I've also considered the fact that I'm not showing my face because I like to have my own privacy, I get that. Maybe those people that fall into that category are just like myself. We want our privacy and we just don't want to be the poster boy for any of this. But that's the further conundrum because it's representation matters and we need other people to see that there's other ways to be gay and so that those people can see that yeah, not all gay people are this way and not all gay people want to go shopping with you and not all gay people watch Drag Race. Like, I'm jumping off my soapbox. Can you see me? A lot of y'all hate the gays with Rock Rick Owens overpriced Converse knockoffs and use them for their gaydar to confirm what you already knew about your man. Don't at me, just get you a new man. And speaking of agendas, why y'all not outraged at all the rappers promoting single motherhood with every rapper admitting to shooting the club up? I heard a song from 1998 the other night and the dude was worried about somebody finding out they didn't use protection. So searching on the floor, didn't see no rubber packets, now I'm screaming like... Ah! Yeah, today is the default to going it raw on the first date. Going off in the comments won't change that opinion, so stop giving energy to something that doesn't serve you. Turn your back and take away his power. I take back every bit of energy I gave you. You're nothing. Content creators are not your friends. At best, take your comments and messages as one-way fan mail and don't expect a reply. Some of y'all do too much and overstep boundaries, getting real familiar, and that's why you got the distance you received. Stop following people just to follow people and stop taking unfollows personal. Your lack of engagement is fucking up my algorithm, so why are you offended when you didn't like, share, or comment anyways? Y'all weird as fuck for that shit. Not everything is projecting us. Sometimes, many times, it's reflecting back what you're giving us. Changing gears, white people take for granted being able to run down the street, not dress for running. If I go sprint down 125th dress for work, people would either move out of my way or start running and asking questions later. When do I stop being toxic to myself? Gotta go further in detail on this topic. So we're gonna go ahead and put a pin in this and that video is coming soon. And if it's out already, you'll see a little ding, ding, ding going off right now. Too many gays are basing their relationships off of heteronormative especially when it comes to the act of sex. The fuck you mean you only bottoming for your partner but expect every other dude to be a bottom for you? Same as straight men thinking they're somehow allowed to poke anything moving, but the one they choose to settle down with has to be pure and a virgin. As if you weren't just smutting out the same women that others were wanting to be pure, and who's to say that you're not the smut in their eyes? Uh, I don't think I realized until just now how much of an ick that word is pure. Gross, that's disgusting. Don't say that, don't call people that. Uh, that's nasty. Oh, nasty ass. Even us gays deal with this BS because every top wants a bottom but don't want the bottom to be too experienced because you know, he don't respect himself. Which further implies the peach is worth more than the eggplant. 
if the praise for the eggplant is what's tolerable. Glad I'm married, cause I would never for you fools. A lot of y'all have opinions but fold too easily, so what's the point? Y'all are the same ones to believe conspiracy theories, but too dumb to understand what you believe, i.e. the Bible. What about Adam's first wife? If you ask me, that doesn't mean Adam was the issue. He had his equal, but needed less. Speaking of less, if a person tells you that you're too much of anything, tell them to go get less. The fuck you look like shrinking yourself for some insecure fool. And most of you can't even recognize when you're being gaslit. Y'all fall for trolls in the comments all the time. But you're fucking using it wrong. You keep on saying gaslit and gaslight, but you don't fucking understand it. You fucking baby reindeer. Look at ya. I'm not sure if it's Capricorn or Pisces, that's the worst sign. Capricorns are the worst. What? I can't deal with no Pisces. Let me know. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense for me because I'm a Sagittarius and both of those signs are actually the worst compatibility for myself. In business and friendships, everything all around. Sorry for those people. I have this reservation. Now hear me out, right? For those of you that have, you know, been here a while and everything, you got to know me to know that. To say that I'm a fan of music would be comically underestimating how much I love music. But I have a, I have a conflict when there's artists that I admire and there's music that, you know, I, I like their work and they say some fuck shit. <laughs> and for some of them, it gives me the ick and others is like, all right, you know, I can, I can push past it. But in this instance, I was a fan of this person's work and I learned of them. Being a fan back in the day of the Joe Budden podcast, hearing their name, checking out their work, liking their work, and then for them to go and say this, I just haven't been the same. I haven't really you know, been checking for them like that since then. I guess what I also find interesting is that as I've gotten older, I think that rap beef is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and that's to divide you and to separate you from your fan base because I can't say that I was a Drake fan before. I was indifferent to his music, right? But now, even the songs that come on my workout playlist, I'm like, uh, this dude is corny, and I like, I skip the song. And that sucks. And it's the same thing with like, um, the act bad song with uh, the City Girls and with Puff or whatever with Diddy. And it's because he's in it. And it made me wonder how the artists that were signed to him how their music is being affected, how their royalties are being affected with the DSPs removing this stuff from the platform. And then even thinking about it from a legal aspect, like would they have a claim for a lawsuit if they were, say, a Danity Kane, um, someone you know who definitely, like those royalties could be making a difference um, of just being able to maintain their livelihood. So it just made me think about that, that when you have these rap beefs, kind of like even when Nicki and Meg had their things going on or whatever, it's like, it felt like it was too much information being shared. And as the consumer, I felt like this is no longer fun for me. I feel like I'm listening to a conversation about information that I should not be privileged to. And some people like that type of gossip. For me, it makes me cringe because I'm like, why are you telling me this? And now even with that, like I'm unable to look at these people the same. Long roundabout way of saying that, the court of public opinion weighs heavier and no one cares about the facts. So once you've already painted this person in this light, regardless if it's true or not, they're now tainted in somebody's eyes. At least that's the way it's become for me. So what do you guys think? Has any of these rap beefs or feuds, like, you know, um, changed the way you've seen people? Because even with Pusha T and Drake, I didn't see Drake um, no, that'd be a lie. I did see him as like, uh, like type of, like, like he became whacker to me, but I didn't think, you know, push went too far. Like, I didn't think that it was a too far or a line was crossed. And I also know that there's no lines to be crossed. Like, you know, you play, you fight to win. So I get that. It's just that I think that now I'm able to see that when you are really good at doing the beef and the battling thing, you can really turn a person's fan base against them. I just hope that it's all being factual because I hate that these people are losing fans over some made up shit. And I think that's it for our episode of my artistic random shit. I will see you next time. Let me know in the comments below. For real, for real, please hit me up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this. Um, what about this format? Is this cool? Um, should we do some of these live? I might be interested in streaming with you guys. Let me know in the comments below. All right. Thank you for being here. 
buckle up your seat belts. We're about to be landing soon. Get your tray tables up. Um, flight attendants will be coming around to collect any of that shit you don't want. And yeah, we're glad you, you made it safely back to Earth. All that good shit. Bye, y'all.